hello namaste to everyone uh, i am back here with the last lecture of this particular module where i would be speaking on map projections so i have already covered what do you mean by a coordinate system what is a map numbering system what do you mean by datum geoid etc now we'll look at uh, the last part which and very important part which is projection so projection is projecting coordinate system when we are trying to project a 3d surface into a 2d space where in our 2d map that can be printed and that can give you more information or for people who want to look at it so that that is where we use projections so in today's class we would be looking at what do we mean by a map projection types of projection projection distortion if in case how it happens then preserving map properties when you are actually projecting then uh i would go into some details of uh, utm projections which is normally uh, the order of date uh, of today where people uh, at cross boundaries are using utm as one of the projection systems of projecting uh, the maps so when i say map projections it's a transformation of a spherical so look at it the earth as a spheroid or a spherical okay or ellipsoidal earth into a flat map you have a entire map here so if i project a light here the the light that projects on the earth surface here on the paper surface is nothing but your map so that is from a 3d surface to a 2d surface using different systems that is nothing but a projection okay so a map projection can be uh, can be on onto a flat surface or a surface that can be made flat by cutting such as a cylinder or a cone so it can be both uh, i have already spoken about the three types of projections before so if the globe after scaling cuts the surface the projection is called as secant okay so keep this in mind this is one of the concepts that everyone has has to know so if if the globe after scaling cuts the surface of uh, okay the projection is then called a secant projection lines where uh, it cuts uh, yeah, the cuts takes place where the surface touches the globe have no projection distortion at all but the farther surfaces will have very huge uh, distortions okay now when we look at globes are hard to store okay you cannot uh, always carry and store globes at every uh, place and it is practical and the, for practical demonstration purposes it may not uh, it may be used only uh, in terms of small practical uh, presentations or uh, for explaining it uh, for some small reasons but when you are actually looking at uh, the entire phenomena or the properties on the ground globes may not be so handy it the globes uh, globe showcases the entire world at once it it is equal to the visual range but projections can be optimized to a, with the minimum distortion specific to that particular region only so you, you can be very specific to that region the computer screens are extremely flat now you get curved uh, screens but when you look at projections that can be useful in visualizing the entire earth on a screen if you have a globe it may not be possible but when you have a digital uh, 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 paper that is in the form of a map then your computer screens can be very useful in terms of understanding but your uh, the curved screens may provide certain uh, issues when you are trying to look at details of a particular map then you have a projected map that can be used for thematic mapping so i'll show you some uh, way uh, some of the applications in form of thematic mapping maybe when we look at the practical class so the first thing that people have to understand is the map scale and map projection when i say map uh, scale now i'm going in terms of uh, map scale and map projections so when someone says map scale it is map scale i'm uh, it is the earth distance by uh, it is a globe distance by the earth distance that is for example 1 is to 50000 Uh, units for example what we saw in the previous uh, properties but when we look at map projections this is the scale factor that is a map distance to the globe distance the way the flattened map distance is there to the globe distance that is nothing but your scale factors it will be in form uh, in the form of decimals 
So this is essentially useful when you are actually providing the distortion less uh, maps and what kind of scale factor it has to improve to give you exact distances on the ground. So scale factor is extremely important in terms when you are looking at the distances. If someone is trying to look at the types of a map, so type of map projections, there are uh, mainly three different types of map projections. We have already spoken about this. You have a cylinder, okay? Now let's say this is this is a cylinder, okay? I I have uh, wrapped a paper around the cylinder. Now the paper is with the ink, okay? Now it for the cylinder forms uh, the entire. Uh, I mean, sorry. Uh, for example, let us take this as an earth surface, which is spheroid, okay? Now. I wrap the paper like a cylinder. Your cylinder is actually uh, in the circular shape along the length. So if you have uh, wrapped this paper in a form of a cylinder, now you have uh, the ink that has been put on it. Now I open this uh, particular paper from one particular fashion. The ink that marks that I have found on this particular paper is in the form of a cylindrical projection. Okay, so this uh, particular type of projection is ac accurate in terms of equatorial zones only. So if uh, someone is working with equatorial zoning and looking at uh, uh, those maps, then the cylinder is extremely cylindrical projections is extremely useful in such uh, issues. The next thing that we would look at in the map projection is the cone. Now, if again, if I consider this as a spheroid, if I have this as a spheroid, okay. Uh, then we have a cone that is put on it which means the topper portion which is sharper is uh, on the upper range and the lower portion which has bigger diameter is put on this particular uh, earth surface. Now you have the ink that is actually molded on, uh, on this paper. So once you open this particular uh, uh, paper, so the projections that you see of the land surface on this particular map is nothing but a conic projection. Okay, so why is this conic projection necessary is uh, when you have certain uh, data that you are actually looking at in the mid latitude uh, zones, then you need a conic projection. So then you have other uh, projections such as azimuth or a plane projections. When you look at uh, azimuth or plane projections, it is wow, uh, some of those projections which test the earth surface. Again, if we have this earth surface something like this, okay when we look uh, as a spheroid. So now if you have a projection which is projected something like this an oblique maybe or completely on the north pole or completely on the south pole or towards the eastings. So this particular projections uh, if I have a light source that is actually emitting like this and you have a source that is uh, uh, providing the projection details. So the projection that falls because of this forms nothing but a plane or a azimuth projection. So though we have uh, discussed this, I am trying to revise this uh, aspect so that uh, the next part of what we are understanding uh, will be on the right track. So and knowing the surface uh, used uh, helps actually determine the type of a project, right type of a projections that are uh, required. So when let us go into more details of cylindrical projections. So now earth in intersects the cylinder at on one circle that is the tangent case. If you look at this you have a tangent, you have a secant, I have already spoken about the secant case, you have a transverse case, you have an oblique case. So cylindrical projections can be looked at in all of these cases. So each, in, uh, each uh, earth intersects the cylinder as two small circles in the secant case. This I have even shown you in uh, my previous uh, uh, slides and points where the cylinder touches earth has absolutely no distortions but where it is farther from that particular point it is where you have the higher amount of distortions. Then projections can be based on axes that are parallel to the earth surface okay, or the earth rotational axis at 90 degrees to it that is the transverse or at the angles that are oblique. So you can have 60 degree, you can have 70 degree, it forms an oblique uh, angles to the uh, particular uh, location. So that is about the cylindrical projections. But when you look at the cone, so as I said, it is based on the conic and uh, mid latitude regions are the regions where the accurate representations can be found. So earth intersects 
as it has a cone if i take this as earth and if you have a conal uh, uh, conal representation so if it is a tangent then it intersects at only one circle whereas in a secant case it is at two points normally uh, that's how you differentiate a tangent and a secant which uh, uh, which we have seen and points where cone uh, touches the earth has absolutely no distortions every in every case where it is touching the cone it doesn't have a distortions but point that is projected here on the non conal surface or non touching surface so that is where you find the most distortions so uh, good examples of this is lambert com uh, conformal uh, uh, conic projection which is uh, which was used uh, uh, as an example in my previous slides then uh, we have azimuthal projections uh, for example this is a polar projection that is represented here this is your spheroid so you have a, 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 a maybe a planar surface that is put on uh, towards uh, its poles so this forms a polar projection if it is on the equator it forms a equatorial projections if it's oblique it forms oblique projections a very good example of uh, uh, azimuthal projection is the lambert uh, azimuthal equal area projections so it is uh, we'll we'll look at it uh, somewhere in our uh, when we are looking at uh, defining area etc equal area projections are extremely useful when you are calculating different earth surface in terms of area representation etc so we'll look at uh, this in uh, probably in uh, next uh, next module of our of my presentations so a very important thing that you have to understand uh, during uh, the transformation is that you may reduce a cells that is you uh, here you are actually generalizing for example if you are looking at it here you are generalizing certain aspects of a cell then you are interrupting a, you are making or breaking so that is you are interrupting certain part of information that has been transmitted from a 3d surface then you are distorting we may distort scale which means uh, we uh, the, uh, the amount of representation that i have already spoken about how the scale distorts but uh, the we are distorting the scale in terms of information also we distort area the true representation on the map may not be the true representation on the ground okay we distort directions or uh, uh, we uh, did see some examples here no projections in is perfect to the map of the entire earth so that that is the thing that we have to remember all the time and every projections has certain limitations in terms of projecting uh, different parts of the earth surface so look at that projections which are uh, where, where you are located and use those projections for uh, the locational information which would be much better in terms of projecting the earth surface exactly for example when we are looking at uh, tangent and secant those are the places where the intersection of the earth surface takes which means that these are the points where you have exact map uh, locations so look at those uh, locations for exact details and if you are located in those details use that uh, certain uh, those kind of projections for your analysis okay so when i say map projections it has certain uh, limitations for example no projection uh, is perfect which could preserve all map properties so the property is uh, the the this property of is called as a map distortion there are certain distortions where the map property may not be represented in a true form so there hence any flat map map can be perfect it cannot be perfect equivalent and conformal at the same time most fall between two components either it is equivalent or conformal maybe uh, uh, maybe it is conformal or maybe just it is equivalent so no uh, no map can be both equivalent and conformal some map preservative uh, uh, properties are here for example if you look at uh, shape as one of the property it is only conformal if your map is preserving the shape of the earth surface then it is conformal map if it is preserving the property of an area then it is equivalent or equal area map that uh, that's what i explained about the lambert equidistant map then if you are looking at a uh, distance then it is only an equidistant map if you are looking at direction then it you have an azimuthal map which uh, would give you much more details so uh, to compare each uh, edge of edge edge match maps in uh, gis both maps must have the same projections that is what i am same as i am repeating it all along 
So everything should be in the same projection system in order to match two maps. No two maps can be matched if they are in two different projection system. Okay. So, so let me uh, come to the universal uh, transfer uh, marketer as uh, one of uh, one of the systems. So it is a cylindrical conformal projections that which means to say that shapes uh, is preserved. Okay. So it divides Earth into six. Uh, degree zones every every zone is divided into 6 degrees divides earth between 84 degree north and 60 degree south into 60 zones so each zone 1 begin, uh, begins at 180 degree west so uh, the representation of this i have already shown but in the next slides we'll also see some representations of uh, utm then scale distortions is 0 0.99 uh, triple nine six, uh, which is which may be approximated to 0 0.97 now the distortion is about 0 0.03 so along the central uh, meridian of the zone so only we should keep this in mind every zone has a central meridian and when you are looking at that particular central meridian you have certain distortions most commonly used projection system most of the mapping system today or mo uh, most of the uh, data usage systems in gis or any of the other aspects related to gis whether it is remote sensing cartography etc most of the systems use uh, uh, this particular UTM uh, projection or cylindrical projection. So this is uh, representing the entire UTM system. So you have uh, the zone origin here which is an equator and you have a central meridian that is uh, for that particular zone that is represented here and uh, when you look at this, uh, this, this particular map is generated through a cylindrical opening. Now if you look at the entire UTM zones. Yeah, the you can see this is this is representing the zone numbers here. Okay, this uh, this is representing the zone numbers, and you can see India lies between somewhere between 42nd zone and the 48th zone, or just stopping at the 47th zone. So this uh, particular zone is where you can find uh, U UTM uh, word UTM zones for Indian uh, regions. So. When, when you are looking at a, but, uh, why specifically UTM zones, you probably will understand when you look at the practical part of uh, different zone numbers. Okay. So when you look at uh, Indian part, Indian subcontinent has a total of 6 UTM zones, each zone numbers 42 is far west that is for Gujarat and 47 is far east that is for your Arunachal Pradesh. When you look at certain major uh, cities that fall in different zones, 43 you have Srinagar, Chandigarh, Delhi, Jaipur, Bhopal. So these all come under the 43rd zone. You can see somewhere here. You have 44th zone which is falling here where some of other major cities like Chennai, Hyderabad uh, can be found. You have 45 which is uh, far eastern zone and the last part of the eastern zone lies in 46 and some part in 47. So, the, uh, uh, so when you see the western part, the Gujarat, the uh, major part of Gujarat falls in 42nd zone and some part in the 43rd zone. So this is about the UTM zone classifications in India. So uh, probably uh, you know, now we have understood the coordinate system, the datums, the geoid, why the geoid has to be used and why the, the datums has to be used, what are the different referencing systems and then we have uh, looked at uh, uh, different projection systems in terms of map projections. So, so to summarize this particular class, map projection uh, we looked at different map projections the type of projections cylindrical cone and azimuthal so cylindrical is wrapping a paper as a cylinder across the spheroid of the earth surface then you have a cone a conical shape a projection that comes out of the earth surface then you have azimuthal shape where the flat surface is on the poles or on the equator or uh, is more oblique uh, then um, where when we look at preserving map properties either it is conformal equi equivalent equidistance or azimuthal it, uh, it can be between two different aspects but it cannot have every aspect then we looked at what is uh, utm uh, projections and we looked at different zones in uh, that utm uh, projection belongs in india so uh, understanding this uh, this entire module would actually help you in and uh, the mapping exercise that we would take up but uh, uh, I would suggest everyone to go back to Survey of India website, download the map and look at the entire uh, map system and also look at the entire indexing system of a particular map. So once you have understood that, the rest uh, uh, 
things can be easily understood how to ma uh, convert it into a, a digital scape and also looking at uh, extracting features on a digital map so that uh, would give you more uh, information so as of now uh, i finish with this thank you very much let's meet in the next class